Shalom, Kawahlo Yahawa, Bahasham Yahawa Shai, Bahasham Racha Kwadash. Double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone that rule well and labor in the word and doctrine. Shalom the Bachar, peace to the elect. And Revelation 14, and we'll start with one. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, to Zion one made in a monument, and with him a hundred and forty. On an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung, as it were a new song, before the throne, and before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song, but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto Yahweh and to the Lamb. Now I want to deal with this idea of being a virgin. Now it's not... What's this? Okay, cool. It's not talking about someone that's never had sexual intercourse. And you go into Proverbs chapter 5, it refers to wisdom as a woman, or as a doctrine, or should I say doctrine as a woman, versus a strange woman, which is a divergent doctrine. So Proverbs chapter 5 and 1, My son, attend unto my wisdom, and bow thine ear to my understanding, that thou mayest regard discretion, and that thy lips may keep knowledge. Verse 3, For the lips of a strange woman drop as an honeycomb and her mouth is smoother than oil just like the adversary psalm 55 and 21 the words of his mouth were smoother than butter but war was in his heart his words were softer than oil yet were they drawn swords and that can be applied to the beast that beast man and he has a doctrine he has an image an icon, meaning the likeness which goes into the system, the doctrine, philosophy, and ideology. Revelation 13 and 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. We'll skip down. Where's the image? All right, 14. And in fact, we'll just read it. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and this is the beast... Oh, this is the beast that came up out the sea in one. That's going into the pagan Roman Empire, which was ruled over by Esau Edom, the Edomites. Revelation 13 and 12. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth, Salachia, causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. How did he do that? He did that with his great, what is it? it's, uh, you could say it's a manner of miracle. His bombs, his weaponry, because he was blessed with the sword. Ooh, that's that same red dragon there. Or oh, Salaki, the same um, red, well, one, on, on a, <laughs> the red horseman. Revelation 6 and 4, And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. So he's sat upon the red horse. He's, he's the, um, the controller, if you like, of the red horse. Sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Now who's blessed with the sword? Esau, Edom. Genesis 27, let's start around 39. Start 38. And Esau said to his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau, I shall, lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the, fat, be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. And by thy sword shalt thou live, and shall serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass, when thou shalt have the dominion, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. And he goes on to say that how he wanted to slay his brother after this. And all this is going on to say, well, this is the, the beast man. 
this is the one that took peace from the earth. This is the one who had, had power to do great miracles, to make fire come down as part of his blessing, his sword. Kharab in the Hebrew, which means to make waste, to destroy, to cut a tool or an instrument, and a bullet, a gun. That's that today. That's what he's mass producing across the world. So any reason you Jakes can get a gun, get a, any manner of that cutting weapon, is because Esau Edom is making them in production. And yes, they, they are Esau Edom. All right? And that was part of his, I said that already, that's a part of his blessing, and that's how he was able to deceive people. Revelation 13 and 14, Then deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, in the sight of Rome, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image, an icon to the beast, which had the womb by a sword and did live. So then you have two horns like a lamb, Democrats, Republicans back in the pagan Roman Empire, the Plebeians and the Patricians. Verse 15, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast <clears throat> should be killed. So you don't get the, in the down with the system, the doctrine, of ideology, philosophy. It's not talking about Caesar Borgia as an image, but that's encompassed in the image, in the philosophy and so on. Verse 16, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast. Now, what what does that represent? It represents being married. If he penetrates you with the, the mark, the charagma, the RFID microchip, NFC, however they phrase it or whatever, is that technology there. It says, um, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, charagma, or the name of the beast. I believe the word in Greek is um, anoma. The name is going into a, the marriage covenant. Now this links in, because what did it say? They are virgins, I mean they don't, they've not been penetrated or touched by any other thing. They've been renewed or redeemed, as it said like that, from among men. Just like Revelation 5 and 9. This is so lucky. Revelation 5 and 9 it said, And they sung a new song. Is that not what it said? Revelation 14 and 3. And they sung as it were a new song. Revelation 5 and 9. It says, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to Yahweh, by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And hast made us unto our God, possessive, our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Now you get Revelation 1 and 6. It says, And hast made us kings and priests unto power and his father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now Peter said that. And Peter was unto even the quote-unquote Christian scholars will tell you he was unto the circumcision. First Peter 2 and 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. So a holy nation, that's that royal priesthood there. Exodus 19, 5 through 6. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which I shall speak unto the children of Israel. Banya Yasharala. So if the, the fulfillment of that will come in the kingdom. So that's what that redemption is talking about. Now if you're meant to shew, shew, shew forth praises, be holy, that means separate. So you're not meant to be mixed in, mingled with the other doctrines. Now we'll go back to this. Revelation 13, because you wouldn't want to be uh, def defiled in that sense. You have Second Corinthians 11 and 2. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Hamashiach. Matthew 25 and 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. So that's what it's representative of. And now in here, Revelation 13 and 15, it said, And he had power to give uh, Salaki 16, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Now the number, it goes into Chai, 
Xi Stigma. And when you go back to all of them, some link up with, well, one links up with the so-called Samech, Samech, or the Sa, which represents a, a tent pole or something being stuck in the ground. Certain ones go into uh, a stigma, going going into a, a literal, well, that was a stigma upon someone. Well, it used to mean a literal etching, and it's used metaphorically. Like if someone says, well, you got cut, that's a metaphor, but the original use of that was physical, so you've got to be able to discern that. And in the context of this, it's clearly talking about something that sticks in. I, you know, how do you buy and sell with a philosophy or a doctrine? No one ever explains that. Now, when you when you say, "Well, no, you said the image," yeah, because the image, that that um that woman, that doctrine, will lead you into that, or it can lead you into that. So yeah, it's a precursor, but the mark itself is a charagma. It's a physical, physical thing. And the number of his name, so you have Kai, uh, wait, Chai, Ksai, Stigma, and all of them going back to a cutting or engraving or an etching, or yes, an incision. All right, the name of the beast, well, the name, what did Yahweh say? He surnamed Israel. Isaiah 45 and 4, For Jacob my servant's sake, and Israel Yasharala, mine elect, I have called thee by my name, I have surnamed thee, but thou hast not known me. Now what do you have when you have marriage? At least a couple, couple years back in this country, that being England, when you had a marriage, the woman would take on the man's last name, take on his vibration to denote a possession. All right, so we're a possession of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So we're meant to be surnamed by him. But if you get the name of the beast, that's etching that out. And that's becoming joined unto the beast. It's like an all. It's a physical all. The last idol that the whole earth, well, Esau wants the whole earth to bow to. But you can't do that. You have to come as a chaste virgin. So you can't go into other doctrines and be defiled therewith. Isaiah 40, 54 and 5. For thy maker is thine husband, Yahweh of hosts is his name, and thy redeemer the holy one of Yasharala. The power of the whole earth shall he be called. Yeah, because he made the whole earth and he's going to rule and reign over the whole earth, starting with Yahweh Shai and Yahweh Shai and down, starting with his elect. Then the whole nation of Yasharala will be that kingdom of priests. But first, it has to be a redemption, a trouble. Those that are redeemed out of great tribulation, as it talks about. I believe that's Revelation 7. We've got Jeremiah, the third chapter, and one. They say, if a man put away his wife, and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, yet return again to me, saith Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So, that we was pro well, there you are. It was prophesied that Jake would go off, and then certain ones, the prophets wrote about this. And what a... Um, what an abomination both Judah and Israel became in the sight of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai being defiled with women being defiled with other doctrines because that's the beginning of spiritual fornication because we're in a marriage covenant wisdom of Solomon 14 and 12 for the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication and the invention of them the corruption of life that's how life, life the way of life was corrupted that's that strange woman. Proverbs 5 and 3. For the lips of a strange woman drop as an honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. So just like the one espousing that doctrine, his mouth, is his words are um, smoother than oil, smoother than butter, however it's phrased, Salahia. It said, but her end is bitter as wormwood, and wait, well, sharp as a two-edged sword. Let's just search up wormwood real quick. Wormwood in Revelation. Revelation 8 and 11. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died or died of the waters because they were bitter. And what's I'm talking about? It says, um, A great star from heaven burning as it were a lamp. 
and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of water. So if you go with the doctrine of bitterness, yes, it's a judgment of bitterness. It's all going into, ultimately, for the, the fornication of with um, Babylon. Revelation 17 and 1, And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vows and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great horn that sitteth upon many waters. And we're not talking about many nations. Verse 2, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. And what's that? They've gone unto another woman. That, that woman, of course, being a doctrine, is what I'm saying. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So that's that strange woman. Even she's called a woman. She's called Babylon the Great, the whore. She's known as that other woman. Well, we've got that Revelation 17 and 15. It saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples and multitudes, and nations and tongues. Now Revelation 17 and 5 says, And upon her forehead, talking about that whore, was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. So that's that whore, that harlot. Uh, Proverbs 5 and 16 let thy fa uh, 15 drink waters out of thine own cistern and running waters out of thine own well. Because he meant to drink of what? Well, Yahweh Hashem Yahushai has already set up the greatest doctrine, the greatest husband. So you can't get defiled with other women. You've, we've got a marriage, marriage contract, a marriage covenant. It says, Proverbs 7 and 4, Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman. They may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with her words. So they, that's the one that's loud, stubborn, so on and so forth. So you don't want to get defiled by that. It would um, jeopardize your chances. Ultimately, you won't. If you're of that elect, you'll never not be of that elect. But just on a an earthly or a carnal way of viewing it. Revelation 14 and 4. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb, whithersoever he goeth. These were, these were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto Yahweh and unto the Lamb. Then you have another judgment, Revelation 14 and 8. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Nine, and the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Yahweh, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. What's that talking about? A judgment again, another great judgment upon them. Because they did what? They drank of the wine of the wrath. Oh, so, so lucky they drank of the wine of her fornication. So they will drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Revelation 18 and 3. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Who? That strange woman. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. So they're not virgins. And the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And now we'll wrap it up. We'll just get that last one, 14. We'll read Revelation 14, 1 through 5, and then close up. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood in the Mount Zion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps, and they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne. And before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto Yahweh and unto the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. I pray that was edifying. On to the next one, Lord willing.
All praises to Yahweh, Baal Shem Yahweh Shai, Baal Shem Kodash.